Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to the world. And today we're going to talk about an article about how to apply the lessons of why, what, and how we do things. Hey, Paul. Good morning. Good. Good morning, lovely friend. And uh, I'm excited to be here till nine. Then I have a meeting. Uh, so just to let you know, I hope you are wonderful and welcoming everyone to celebrate everything with Rex Sykes. Why, what, and how we do things matters. Oh, this is such a good blog post. Um, I'm excited. So let me just go on mute and we'll invite some people in. Hi, Dina. Welcome, welcome. We're just inviting beautiful people in. Thanks for joining us today. Love to. Dina. There, I did say it right. Awesome. Okay, good. I always like how you put how to pronunciate your name. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very helpful. Inviting you to speak if you'd like to. Love to have you. Okay, let's see if that worked. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't work for me. Eh, let's see. Okay, we'll keep inviting and then we'll get going. Okay, I think that worked. Thanks, Paul, for putting up the uh, the link as well. Awesome, awesome. And uh, hey, Dina, in the chat, what is new and good? If you can't come up today, what's new and good? I'm putting that in there. What is new and good? And good in your beautiful world. Okay. Wonderful, wonderful. Actually, now I can stay till... 9 15 because my meeting got pushed till uh half an hour later yay okay perfect all right what is new and good and paul i know you're inviting people right now so let me do that for just a few seconds and yeah i'm gonna be doing that too and just so you know the article is nine medium-sized paragraphs which is good for paragraph reading or solo reading or any permutation we choose to do today All right, as Paul is clicking away there, how cool is that? I love that. Love it, love it. Awesomeness. And uh, I wanted to share some good news. What's new and good in my world is I'm going to be, uh, I know Rex is on the uh, Los Angeles Tribune, the Wonderful Leadership Week that's coming up that Rex is wonderfully um, actively participating in. I'm going to be on the Moral Compass uh, panel which is super exciting and that's new and good in my world. And I get to link my contributions that I did in that book to the launch of my book. It's coming up, Paul, and I got to check in with you. Our uh, publishing team was supposed to have sent out the advanced reader copy. So on the back end, let me know, make sure you've gotten it. Cause I know Deanna was supposed to get it and it didn't pop in. So I'm huh, got to check, make sure these things are getting done. <laughs> so I got it. I read it. And I know that there's probably some things that I'm so nervous about that because it's only um, in a positive way. You put something out there and then we have 15 chapters. So it's only like just the little beginning pieces of it. So um, I'm, I'm anticipatory. So don't share. <laughs> Tell me how, what you thought later. <laughs> well, the thing is, I read the email, said what to do. So I'm waiting for the day when we can get the ebook. Yes. And it says Kindle version. I don't have a Kindle. Hopefully, it's just a generic e version. But the point is, uh, when I get the e version, then I can publish my review. I've already have my review written. Oh, thank you so much. And yeah, usually um, in that in the book launch th phases, even if you don't, it's we always do the advance. So the May sixth. Again, I don't want to take too much time of Rex's time, but um, May sixth, you'll get a link, and you just kind of go to the the Kindle, and it just it's like 
I think it's like less than a dollar or something and you just click on it and then it, it just mm -hmm. adds that, that piece to it. And then the book will launch on the eighth and we're going to have, hi, Deanna. We're going to have, um, two main events in the morning and one in the early afternoon, um, with us being there and all that kind of stuff. So, um, thank you. If it wasn't clear, um, please send me a private message as well. I would love to be able to fix that because, you know, it's, um, it's always good to get good feedback and then maybe we can make it a little bit simpler for people. Well, the email is pretty simple. I got it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hi, Deanna. Oh, we're going to make sure. Beautiful. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Dina. Glad to have you here. I'm still inviting people, so I can't do anything else yet. You're welcome, Charles. Hello. Celebrate everything house. So, congratulations, Sandra. Okay. Here to cheer you on. Thank you, my beautiful friend. And hey, Charles, welcome, welcome. Oh, wasn't it life a blessing, I tell you? I'm just so happy. The other thing that's new and good in my life is my family's finally starting to feel better. They had the bugs that came back. My husband, um, even he's retired, he took his beautiful um, high school. Phone call interrupted you there. All right, guys, can you hear me? Now we can, yes, now you're back. Okay, so okay, uh, broke off at um, your family finally, feel, finally feeling better and your husband something. <laughs> All right. I'm going to call again. It's okay. Are you getting, oh, you're getting overtime today, Nina. You are. We'll go get her with that. <laughs> and you know, sometimes it's worth it. Yeah. And okay. Sometimes... Well, my sharing is done. 141 oh. people on Clubhouse, 15 people <laughs> via email, and three social media platforms. Boom. All right, you're the sharing machine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know what? It's kind of weird. The more people are in the room, the more you share, the better. But usually by the time, it's kind of like a circular thing in the way this al kooky algorithm is because if you wait until you have a lot of people to start sharing, well, then you're sharing to people who are already there. It's kind of weird. But I've got the article, which is nine medium-sized juicy paragraphs today. And I've got my yerba mate. I've got the article open on my iPad. So I got an eye on my iPhone for the room. So I am resourceful and I got it all set. Ooh, that's great. Uh, uh, let's see, let me refresh this because it's showing me that Sandra's on the phone. Okay. Yeah. All right, so refresh Clubhouse. And so Dina and, and, and the chat shared working overtime today. Not working. She's getting overtime today. And she's getting <laughs> overtime today. Yeah, Not but it's a time and a half for double time. <laughs> hey, Dina, tell us if it's um, time and a half for a double time or more. Her schedule reminds me of that innocently <laughs> um, childish remark, George W. Bush had done some woman interviewed her and she says, I work three jobs, three jobs. Isn't that uniquely American? That's awesome. No, it isn't. <laughs> it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. Again, I remind you all, if you're interested about such topics, there's a tiny, not a tiny, but it's a small little book called The Age of Imagination. The Age of Imagination by 
good Scottish friend of mine called Phil Tear, and he writes about the ideas for on for a while that we should have a basic, um, you know, living wage uh, for everyone that's just automatically paid to you that covers your basic needs. And he's, he postulates quite convincingly in this book that if we had that and how we could easily afford it, there would be such an explosion of creativity when people's basic needs are set, they can invent and do things with, uh, without the wolf at the door. And that would make a wonderful life. It makes a very convincing argument, the age of imagination. Check it out. I love I love that idea and the way that you just put it that we could easily afford it. Well, it's it's about for the whole world, the developed world. And you look at the EU, you look at North America, South America, Asia, whatever. You know, it doesn't go into every possible country, but it just talks about you know inefficiencies of budgets. And actually, if you took the leap and did it what you would see, how many great new ideas would come to the world when basically people's shelter, healthcare, education, and food are taken care of. And the basic, you know, human wage or whatever has been around in many manifestations for centuries. And there's always a newer version of it in whatever time. And I think it's always fascinating to look at because it's just so bold and daring and also so stupidly simple too. Yeah. But you know, even that, we can apply a why, what, and how. Indeed. Hello. Sorry about that, everybody. By the way, Here's a little trick. Here's a little secret for you. In today's article, there is, um, believe it or not, there's a sentence or two that a person who supports the former president who's on trial right now would say, yeah, that's exactly what we've been saying. And see if you can find that sentence or two. It's in here. <laughs> you can interpret it just like that. Sorry, everyone, for be, for having to take my call from my doctor. Not sorry, I mean, I had to pop out for a little bit. So I'm not sure what I missed, but I'm sure it was a wonderful moment. Wait a minute, did you say daughter or doctor? Daughter, D-A-U-T-H. Oh, daughter, doctor. yes. Doctor. Yeah, because I'm sensitive to that because the word for doctor and daughter are really, really close sounding in uh, Nederlands. Oh, ah, cool. Very cool. Very, very cool. Yeah, doctor or doctor. <laughs> Holy moly, that is really close. <laughs> yeah, and if your if your um, doctor is a doctor, well, then it's really tricky. Yeah, it would be considering I do a lot of my work in healthcare. <laughs> that would be really, really, really fun and interesting. Oh, oh yeah, it's like cool the thing. Ted Lasso thing where they finally did that thing. It was an old riddle, but today no one should have trouble with it. You know where the. Um, the um what is it the wait let me figure this out let me figure this out oh this is a child is in an accident you know on the highway and brought into the um to the emergency and the surgeon looks at it and says i can't operate on this this is my son oh yeah because the man and the and the i don't know whatever but the thing is like well, how could that be? Because the man, and then, oh, wait a minute, the surgeon's a woman. Ha, ha, ha. And they say that in Ted Lasso, but it's sort of like all the women are like, yeah, yeah, she's a woman. <laughs> it's not a riddle anymore. And see, riddles like that, that used to be around 20, 30, 40 years ago, they get updated because we're making some little bitty progress. Thanks. I love that. That's awesome. And I, I really miss that show. <laughs> I still get their little updates, their blurbs, you know, they're so powerful and so bang on, you know, such a nice uh, message. Yeah, I've watched that series. The world. I mean, all three seasons, probably 30, 40 times so far. It's just so good. So good. So, so good. That's, that's why I have a big cardboard stand up Ted Lasso right in my office. Oh my God, I love that. <laughs> Love and I have a big Love believe, it. you know, sign up above, tape with the same black tape and everything after, after a crazy angle. 
it's but it's so true it's so accurate you know yeah. throughout times mm -hmm. they they really tapped into something so powerful that we we need i mean i'm in canada but just the all, all over the world that's the kind of message that we need so yeah because look at the themes that grow <laughs> over the seasons of real true forgiveness uh you know sorrow empathy mental health oh my gosh normalizing mental health with nothing else that's there you know yep yep agree i agree i'm a big proponent to support that's why i do um i sit on a board with it's called new view society and we support about six houses for persons who are living with chronic and persistent mental health and we're building a big 50 unit um building right now well it's it's We've got the money now for it, and it's it, construction. It won't start for another year because it takes so long. But it's it's really the need is so dire out there. I mean, everywhere. But I don't want to get too far off. But it's um, yeah, it's near and dear to my heart. And um, okay, looking at the clock here at uh, thirteen minutes to the hour, shall we begin to read? We have nine paragraphs. Sure. And how shall we read? Sure. What do you want to do, Sandra? You're our special weekend guest, so it's in your hands. Well, you know what? I love to treat you all. So why don't I do some of the reading, unless you really want to read, just to give you a chance to have some a break. It makes me feel like I'm giving back to everybody. Um, I will begin the read. And then if I get tired, then I'll hand it over. How does that sound? Go for it. Okay. <sighs> I'm so excited for this one. I just feel so always connected to these wonderful blog posts. So our, our invitation today is... What is that one thing that we can take away? Why, what, and how we do things matters. And the little blurb in the quote, what you think about and feel strongly about, you bring about. Rick Sykes. <laughs> exactly. Good job, Paul. Thanks. <clears throat> Excuse me. At one time, we were the United States. And it worked because we sought unity and harmony and had one vision in mind. The divided states will not stand or last as people fighting for their own party and points of view. The old saying, united we stand, divided we fall, is accurate. When politics put party and profit and power over the people, we suffer. The U.S. has been brought and sold, and it shows we need to return to harmony, cooperation, and collaboration that benefits all instead of just a few. No man can serve two masters. He will hate one. Two forms of matter cannot occupy the same space. Positivity cannot flourish when distracted and deflected. Focus matters direction matters you must intend the change you want you must think about what you want and decide to make it happen to bring it about wishing and wanting hating and hurting won't do it Wishing and wanting only produces more wishing and wanting. We must decide to make it better. Clarity is necessary. Focus is necessary. Action is necessary. The founding fathers had a vision. They knew exactly what they did not want and what they did want that could be better. Then they acted to make it happen. They united in the vision. They cooperated and collaborated. They didn't compete amongst themselves. They united. Focus, commitment, perseverance were necessary. Against great odds, they were committed. You and I must too in our personal goals Hey, Paul, just so you know, your mic's on or off, whatever that is. Just so you know, in case you, you happen to do something you don't know you're on. <laughs> you and I must, too, in our personal goals. Hey, Tremaine, welcome, welcome, beautiful friend. You and I must, too, in our personal goals, family goals, community goals, national, national, excuse me, goals, 
and world ones. Together we stand and can win. Divided, we fail and fall. We must not let temporary defeat become permanent. We can prevail. We must stop. and be the victors. We can make a difference by deciding the difference we want to enjoy. We meet, look, we need not tolerate the negative, but use it to launch the positive. When we are fed up with where we are at, we are willing to move to make lasting change then. And perhaps only then we will. Unless we leave where we are, we will never be somewhere else. I'm going to repeat that one. Unless we leave where we are, we will never be somewhere else. Don't let conditions, events, or others prevent you from doing good and being good. Make the moments you have matter. Make them magical and memorable, miraculous and magnificent for you, yours, and all others. Let us not be comfortable in defeat or too prideful in victory, but let us serve and serve each other with love. Make kindness understanding, compassion, and care be our mission. What brought the USA together was vision and the willingness to join the mission. What will defeat it? Hey, Alex. What will defeat it? is when we lose sight of what matters as a positive collection and destroy what unifies us by fighting for personal or party gain. If you think this blog is only about the country and not about the divisions within, you will miss the point. If you think it is only about the division within and not the national and global community, you will miss. We are one in spirit and consciousness. Let's grow together and serve each other and show what we can leave this world, each other and ourselves better off than what found them. Reframe, reread that. Let's grow together and serve each other and show that we can leave this world, each other and ourselves better off than we found them. Align our heads and our hearts. Stop hurting and harming. How about we give love and peace? I'm going to think Rex wanted to say, and a chance. Within and without. From above to below. Let's seek to rise higher and not fall further. 
Let's rise to our best and promote the best for each other. Celebrate everything, Rex Sites. Yay! See, me. Sandra, you, you were so magnanimous in saying, if I get tired, I'll pass. You, see, you gathered in strength and power and energy as you got into the zone further and further, didn't you notice? I did notice, and I love reading, and I love to be of, of service to the room, and and to to thank both you and Deanna for always being here. And hey, Jermaine, I know you're probably at work and can't come up, but always love when you're here, beautiful friend. It's it's powerful, and even though I'm I reframe that I am a Canadian citizen, but what I appreciated within that, and what Rex reminds us, what I'm taking away. It doesn't matter where you come from. Truly, it doesn't matter. All of these key ways, mindsets, ways of looking at life are embedded within us from within to without. So all of this is relevant to all of us at any moment, isn't it? So for me, what I'm taking away from this beautiful opportunity, the one action that I'm going to seek to do today is really becoming and honing in on that connection about not the wishing and wanting, but really having that knowingness, having the clarity to really have the focus and the action to build collaborations and connections. So in my work today, that's what I'm going to be focusing on. How am I focusing? How am I building clarity? What else can I do in collaboration with beautiful Sujata today as we move forward with our book launch. What are some of those actions we can do even more easily with joy and with, with just the certainty that there will be great gifts that we can offer. So I'm very, very excited and um, yeah, thankful. So over to you, Paul or Deanna. I would like to take the helm to Really dig in, and what are you taking away from this beautiful post? Over to Paul. Well, Thank bef you. I, before I dig in, I can kind of rise above and take a long view of it. And the long view is uh, it's a nice exposition about that simple be the change you wish to see in the world. When people moan and groan and complain about politics and society and all that, it's that beautiful invitation to become that which you wish to see outside yourself become that inside from within to without be the change you wish to see in the world and what can we say about it there's nine paragraphs about that i was waiting for beautiful deanna deanna i'm not sure if you're able to come off mic lovely friends we'll just hold space for deanna and it and it's so true oh, there's yeah. deanna wonderful thank you Thank you. Yeah, you know, I'm feeling a little resistance. <laughs> and I love to just press into my resistance because it's such a beautiful opportunity to resist. What is this really about? What is this really about? And my curiosity leads me to really the, the, the quest the quest that um, being being drawn to um, about how how much inequality is is tolerated um, and how I can be of service for, as the one as the, um, for the ones who who don't have uh, as as much um, audience for their voice, and I am oh, I'm drawn to the, the the words about the the unity and what unity meant the unity in in comparison um, in in these former times and the opportunity for unity with a new definition from the younger generation even who's educating me 
and I really I appreciate the nostalgia felt for for these previous founders and their vision and I think it's very important to remember how limited the unity actually was. So just embracing that resistance. Um, I am holding space for what unity can mean. Um, not looking back, but taking these words and holding space for what they will mean moving forward because what they meant um, and what they could mean are absolutely um, just so far from the same. It's it's so wild. Um, I think it's really important. Max, good morning. I think it's really important to spend time with that resistance and that is that is what the action that I will um, I'm taking today. It's just to really sit. What does this mean? Why is what is calling my heart from this resistance to make a make a difference in in uh, in the ways that I can? So that's what I'm starting with today. Mm, thanks, Deanna. And hey, welcome, Rex. Welcome, welcome. Celebrate everything with Rex Sykes. It's an awesome day. It's Sunday. And we have Rex with us. And the topic, the blog post, as always, is why, what, and how we do things matters. It was a beautiful. I just felt so blessed reading it today. And we welcome everyone. And Tremaine's at work. And we're inviting and celebrating everything. So please, when you're listening to this on replay, because I know you can and you will, please take the time now to ask yourself, what is the one thing, just one thing, in that blog post that really spoke to your heart? that then you can go out and action. Because through consistent, right, repeated, wonderful action, you will grow, you'll transform, and you will live life on your terms. It's a powerful opportunity. So continue to grow with us. We appreciate you being here. Appreciate that you're listening to Rex in his beautiful Celebrate Everything. And as we are coming together and raising up, there's so many wonderful, exciting new things. I know Rex will get into it. I'm excited to share Rex that I'll be in the Leadership Summit as well with Mo and all the rest of the great, amazing people that will be a part of this. And I'm really celebrating all things because each and every day we have a choice in how we want to live our beautiful lives. So let's celebrate everything that's continued to grow. And as we continue to grow, we just bring in so much positivity and beautiful things. So I'm excited. I'm thrilled to be here. And we continue to invite people. And we thank Dina who left a message. She had to pop out. We continue to share this on and off of socials. I know we have a beautiful community that does this. And we are celebrating together. So when Rex is able and to speak, we always welcome him to flash his wonderful mic. And there's Rex. Good morning, Rex. Good morning, Sandra and all. I appreciate you, Paul and Deanna and uh, Sandra for modding. I appreciate that. Hi, Tremaine. Uh, it's good to see you. It's been a while. And uh, anyone else who's listening, uh, I'm excited about uh, the Leadership uh, Summit. LA Leadership Week starts on Wednesday. And um, it goes from the 1st to the 7th, but it may be extended. We may go longer. We just added Jay Abraham and 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 boxing champion Larry Holmes. So, you know, it's uh, it just continues to grow. Of course, Sandra is on it and so many other people. And Sandra, I appreciate you so much in terms of your heart-centeredness and the way that you uplift and edify and, and lead by example. And, and thank you so much for that. And uh, so she's going to be a part of that. So you're going to want to be sure to register and join it. Uh, the reason for that is because, you know, it's long. <laughs> it goes long each day. And if you register for free, you get access to the replay, so you can watch it anytime, anytime. And um, you're going to want to do that uh, because there's just so many incredible people. I had Les Brown on my show uh, Friday. It was a special show because we were also, um, he and I were recording for the, uh, and 
for the uh, LA Tribune Summit because it, sometimes schedules don't align, so you have to do things um, in a in a recording. But uh, a powerful show with Les on my show, Create Your Best Life with Rex, and a powerful show with Les in the Leadership Week. So you're going to want to watch both. And um, and by the way, when it comes to being a leader, t- tomorrow I go back, uh, my blog is on the third law of karma and, and how that actually does apply to leadership. So uh, read that. But here's, here's an interesting thing. You know, you know a lot of people talk a, a good game and they talk on social media and they're all over the place. And as you know, I, I'm, I say a leader is a tour guide. They talk about the tour, not about the guide. They show you what you can, should avoid and what you can uh, experience that's some benefits. And they take you from one place to the other place, uh, ultimately to, to help you. They're not there for themselves. They're there to give you the help you have the experience. And that's truly what a leader is about. And when it comes to leading, you can lead in so many ways. Talk is cheap. You know, it, nowadays it's tell your story to everybody so they know who you are, so they want to trust you. But they'll trust you far more if your actions demonstrate who you are and who you are demonstrate your actions far more than your words. You don't have to convince somebody to follow you if you're authentic and genuine and caring and compassionate and understanding and loving. And they know that their interests are in your heart and that you will do no harm, but you will seek to uplift and edify and help transform. Then... You don't need to do a commercial. You know why? Jesus didn't do any commercials. And I know, I know there was no, there was no commercials at those times. But but the point is, is his, his message spread because of the example that he lived, if he lived, but the example that he lived and that message has gone all around the world for centuries. The best, the best um, PR is, is referrals. The best PR is word of mouth. The best PR is is someone, you know, you say, hey, you got to try this restaurant, you got to try this movie, you got to see this show, you got to do this, oh, this new album that came. People are very willing to share how much they enjoy something like that. But you know, when it comes to life transforming events, opportunities, blogs, uh, rooms like this, they're not so quick to share. They get on social media. Here's something that annoys me, but I love it anyway. I mean, it's one of those things. I have people who I know who, who aren't on social media that much. And when they do get on, they go back and they go through like, 20 or 30 of my blogs and they like every single one of them. So when I see the notifications, I see, you know, so-and-so reacted, 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 reacted. And then I have dozens of those people who do that. You know what I prefer? If you share the, if you share the post, if you share the blog, if you comment or you leave a question, even if you don't like it, comment, you know, for just to like something is easy. I get, Hey, I know I do it. I do it too. I go through, I like lots of things or I try to love things or I try to give, you know, an emoji that, that fits. But if there's something that I really think is going to benefit somebody, I share it. I share it, you know, and because if I don't, maybe no one else will either. So I want to make sure that I at least share it. And I share some political things on Twitter that people don't like and I lose followers. I share some political things on, on Twitter that I, 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 I still can't call it X um, because to me it is an X. It's a has been an X, an X. Anyway, I'm just kidding. But the point is, is I share political things that people like. I share transformative things. I share, you know, fun things. I share entertainment things. I share, you know, that I like and see, or I comment. Obviously, we can't do it with everyone all of the time, everywhere, or we'd never be off of social media. But if you get value from this room, if you get value from my blogs, if you get value from my posts, please share them. Please comment. Please like. If you get value from my videos, subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification bell so that you can be notified because my show right now, you know, we've got other guests coming up and it's Danny and I, and Danny is a maverick in, in terms of marketing and, 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 and sales and things like that. And we've teamed up to create, you know, a, a number of different opportunities for people. I don't just mean like financial opportunities, that can, but opportunities to change and transform and to discover new things that you can add into your life. And if there's a purchase that you want to make, you can make a purchase. But the point is, is we, we've found each other and said, you know what, we want to build something really wonderful that people could come to. And, and so we've started and we're doing the show and we're inviting guests. And sometimes it's just he and I, and then it's other guests, you know, and the Tribune is working to create, you know, this global mission. And Paul has the, the peace project with, with other people. And there's, there's good things and good people doing things out there. And the, the, the greatest difficulty is to reach people and to get above the surface of the water. 
because at the surface of the water is everybody, everything that's going on that might be important or that could distract or deflect. So in order to get above that, it requires people to actually take action and to do something that the rest of the people won't do. This is why they say it's lonely at the top. There's plenty of room at the top, but few people will go there. There's plenty of room to do things, but few people will take action. There's plenty of room for you to change your life, but yet most people won't. That's, it's just a sad thing. And, and when the society, the culture, the, the powers that be, whether it's educational, political, religious, uh, your workplace, whatever it might be, uh, seeks to keep you not to the getting to the top. You know, we like entertainers who get to the top, who break through, who've got a success story, or sometimes financial people or entrepreneurs, you know, musicians, actors. The, but we don't really want people to make waves and, and to be entrepreneurs. If everybody's an entrepreneur, it doesn't serve society because who would be doing the work? The entrepreneur is great. The leader is great, but guess what? The leader can't do what all the worker bees and all the boots on the ground do. And without the worker bees and without the boots on the ground, the leader is, is leading nothing. They can't, it's impossible. It requires cooperation. It requires collaboration going into what we talked about today. It requires harmony. It requires people aligning in vision and working a mission together in order to make sure that it's there. The leader is like the captain of the boat in the old days before motor boats, you know, and, and powered boats, you know, you had people to row it or to sail it. Well, on a sailing ship, a captain couldn't do it alone. Couldn't get anywhere by himself or herself. You know, it, it requires the team working together in harmony, rowing at the same time in the same direction, you know, to get someplace. And that's, it still does. It doesn't matter whether you're a bank, you know, a mom and pop shop, a supermarket, an airline, Whatever business you're in, it requires other people to help you in some fashion, either to help you get the product to market or manufacture the product or distribute the product or take back the product or to promote the product, to share the product, to improve the product. I mean, whatever it is, it, we, we're, no, none of us are an island. Obama said this years ago and he got ridiculed. He said, you know, it takes, you know, and, and I think Hillary said it takes a village. It does. Our roads don't build themselves. And the person who thought of the road might be a genius, but the people who built the road are the ones we're grateful for because the genius without the people who build it has an idea that goes nowhere. So the people who are saying, hey, I'm a leader and I'm hot shit and I'm the, you know, all this, who cares? Yes, you're innovative. Yes, you're creative. Yes, you, 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 you give us something to aim for, hopefully. But if it's not for your team of people who help you carry it out and execute it and make it happen and promote it and everything else, nobody knows about it. Never underestimate the value of people and the value of caring and sharing and making things happen for everyone. That's what a leader truly is. It's somebody who sees further than maybe some of the other people, points them in that direction, and then travels with them. But the leader can't take all the credit all the leader did was see further but other people saw further too because they joined in that vision you know great ideas happen not but rarely by one person at one time it's like i love david lynch he's like he'll say ideas are like like fishing you drop your line in and you capture a fish the ideas are floating all around you and you just have to capture them when you can Using the right bait, you can capture. I mean, that's you know, that's the kind of thing it is. It's it's like people around the world simultaneously work on things independently, not knowing that the uh, anyone else is working on it. And some of those people are Nobel Prize winners. You know, somebody on one side of the planet was working on it. Somebody on the other side of the planet was working on it. They had no idea that anybody else was working on it when their work came to fruition in the public and everybody, you know, they, both parties are nominated for a Nobel Prize in some cases, not in all, obviously. But the point is, we never do anything alone. We're not that, I mean, I think we're all great, but we're not that hot shit, you know? I mean, you gotta, you gotta put it in perspective. Without the other people, we don't get as far. And that saying, you know, if you wanna go fast, go travel alone. If you wanna go uh, far, travel with others or i mean if you want to get, right you'll go far travel with us well, well that's true 
But nowadays, most people are just interested in fast, fast, cheap, quick. I don't want any effort, any anything. I just want to do it. I want my TikTok to hit eight billion. I want my my YouTube to hit eight billion. I want my social media to hit eight billion. I want to I want to make money. I want to be a global influencer. I want to be. And they don't necessarily have anything to offer. And some of them break through, uh, offering good, good, good things. And others break through offering silly videos about insects or cats or, you know, whatever. So. By the way, that should tell you the state of the world. And I have no problem with funny videos about insects and cats. I like them. I watch them too. But the point is, is that more people gravitate to the entertainment than they do to education. They gravitate toward leisure more than effort or energy put into uh, transforming things. They're, they're, they Think about how much time entertainment is a God, a gazillion trillion dollar in industry, whether it's books, audios, music, dance, movies, acting, TV, you know, whatever. It's just a huge industry. And it's 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 a distraction. And I'm an entertainer. I'm in the movie business, you know. It's it but it's a distraction. And more people are content to stay within their comfort zone because it's too difficult to create new habits to live a life differently. So they want it and they wish it and they hope for it. And they do all that, but they don't do much to change it. The blog today, you know, didn't the United States didn't happen by people wishing and wanting that it happened by people who one had the vision, had the mission and at, at their own great peril said, you know, we don't want that anymore. We want this. And it wasn't about creating competition. You know, the, the, the world we live in today, capitalism, it wasn't about creating capitalism. It was about creating cop- the opportunity for capitalism through collaboration and cooperation. We we're also a socialist society, and we were, and we made room for capitalism. And then capitalism, as it predatory capitalism will, took over everything. So, and and we can we can fix it. We can claim it back. You know, it's like people who come back from the point of death or. They're paralyzed and not walk again, but they then walk or they get mobility back or people overcoming cancer. Les Brown goes, I'm a conqueror of cancer. I'm not a survivor. I'm a conqueror of cancer. I conquered cancer, you know, and fourth stage cancer. I, you know, I mean, we can come back. We can always make changes if we're willing to. And if we do what is necessary to make the changes, if the Wright brothers had said, oh, wow, uh, this didn't work. Okay, well. Fuck it. I ain't going to do anything. Hell with it. Or, you know, we tried this like now a hundred times and we haven't figured it out. If they had stopped anywhere along the line, maybe somebody else would have done it, but, but they wouldn't have done it. They had to take the information that they got, apply it to the situation that they had been in, make adjustments, and then continue on and find out if that worked. And if it didn't, they then made more adjustments. And then if that did, then, well, good. You know, they were making progress. That's what we do. We can claim our country back. We can claim our world back. We can claim a lot of things back. We just don't want to force other people to do it. We don't want to control them or cajole them or make them do things that they don't want to do. We want to live, let them live independently with freedom and liberty. We don't want to take their rights away. We want to make, guarantee their rights so that everybody can live and flourish and live the kind of life that they want without harming other people, but living in cooperation and collaboration and in harmony, united with the idea that, you know what, this isn't bad, but it can be better and we can improve it and we can make it better. It's not about utopia. It's not about perfection, but I'll tell you what I think perfection is. Noticing what's wrong and writing it, correcting the mistake and learning from it and moving forward to make it a little bit better. It may never be the ultimate, but it can be something that we truly enjoy and truly embrace and truly deserve because we cooperate, we collaborate, and we work together in harmony. We unite around the vision of good life, liberty, and for all, and not just a few. So as Leadership Week comes up, you watch the, the people that are called leaders. As I say, no leader calls himself a leader because it's crazy. You know, other people call you leaders. You call yourself by your name. <laughs> I'm Joe. You know, I'm Bob. I'm Sue. I'm Sally. You know, you, you, you identify yourself as who you are and let your actions identify you as a leader, not your words. You can inspire. I have no problem with that. 
but to brag about it is silly. To say, hey, I'm better than you are is silly. Let other people make that assessment. You don't have to make that assessment. And if you do, keep it to yourself. You know, I've said this multiple times. Jesus didn't go, hey, I fed the 5,000 with bread and fish. Who else did that? Huh? Anybody here did that? I am top dog. I am, I am so bad. I am so, you know, you need to follow me because I got it down. Look at who I healed. I raised Lazarus from the dead. I turned water into wine. You want wine? You need to come to me. You can't go to anybody else. Me, I'm the wine guy, all right? I walk on water. I, you, know, you don't have to do that because people will do it for him. Help people help you by being helpful to people. And the world will change. With that, I pass the mic. I want to thank the mods. I want to thank you for listening. And if if you are inspired or learned or corrected or whatever from listening to me or to Paul or Sandra or Deanna or Train or anybody who speaks here, share it. Share it, share it, share it, share it, share it. Don't sit on it. Share it. You see a post you like, share it. You see an event coming up, share it. You want to do something, subscribe. You know, be active. Take charge. Um, I, you know, I got tons of email that I go through and I unsubscribe from all the time, but at least I sample it. And sometimes I re I, I re up it, but I sometimes subscribe. I can't tell you how many times I send out an email and a lot of people open it, but they don't click a single link. And if you don't click the link, you don't know what you are missing. If you click the link and, and look at it, go you know, not, not for me. That's somebody who's wise. That is someone who's wise, someone who's smart enough to go. I'm going to at least check into it and notice what's there and not just go, hey, I am. Yeah, not even going to do it. I open it. And so think about it. There's those people get emails. They never open. I do some of that, too. There's those people get emails. They open it, but then they don't click on the link to see what it's about. I have done that, too. And then there's those people who do all of it. They click on it. They read it. They click on the link and they like it or they click on the link. No, not for me. In order to make an informed decision, you have to know what you're being informed about. And, you know, in this world of headlines, people go, well, if the headline doesn't grab me, I don't. You know what? I get it. I get it. But at the same time, be open. You know, the the more open you are and available to things around you, not just my stuff, but, the, you know, what I'm saying in your world, in your sphere, the more open you are, the larger the world becomes for you. And the larger it becomes, the more you can interact with it, engage with it, and not only that, but influence it. Because if you don't know it's there, you, you don't know it's there. So with that, I pass the mic. Have a beautiful, wonderful day. I hope I see you. Uh, my show will be a, probably a repeat show on Wednesday. Uh, I am busy. I, you know, if, if it were only the leadership week, I would be busy. But there's so many of these things going on and so much that's going on that I'm not here in the room like I'd like to be and, and certain things, but I do whenever I can. Um, and Leadership Week starts on Wednesday, the 1st of May. And it goes for however long. And and Russell Brunson has the challenge, the 8th through the 10th. And after that, I've got something else that's going on. So, and then I'm in California with Joe Vitale. So, I mean, there's a lot of stuff happening. So uh, please be patient with me at the same time. And I love you and bye for now. Thank, thank you, Rex. I was just holding on until, um, even though my meeting started, I just wanted to say thank you so much. And as always, I'm really excited and thrilled that, again, I, I love to be of service and I know I can only speak my personal lens, but the, the power of the words in action. We can, we can hear a lot of things. We can see a lot of things. But what we experience, what we actually see in how that person engages with others and is actually doing the beautiful work and is inspiring others to follow alongside. To me, that's the power. It's living through the wish fulfilled. It's living and doing, being, doing, and having it. And it, the beautiful thing for me is just it takes, it could be easy, it could be quick, or it could take time. And it's just allowing and just doing the right positive repeated action each and every single day. And to me, that is the power 
of Rex's programs. It's the power, and I'm using that word purposefully because it is powerful. You transform from within to without. And it's done just with ease. The one thing I want to give uh, for those who are listening to this in replay, if you haven't already done so, make sure you go out and get Rex's book. We don't talk about that enough because it's such a powerful life on your terms. Put it into Amazon right now. Rex Steven Sykes, Life on Your Terms. It will take you through this beautiful journey. If you do nothing else today, go to Amazon and pick up that book. Because all of what Rex shares and brings to these beautiful clubhouse and all the events that he does, which is really powerful. It's interesting, isn't it? In reflection, when you watch Rex in action, he's a humble man. He's not gregarious. He's not out there with his boldness like he is the master. People copy Rex because he's done it. He is it. He is the true master of this. So if you want to transform your life, join us, pick up his book today, take some programs, and then with right, consistent action, we're surrounded by this beautiful group of community here and others. You build, you grow, and you develop. It's just such a beautiful journey. And I just want to honor you, Rex, because it's from my heart to yours. I just genuinely love your heart. I love your compassion. And that, to me, is what leadership is about. It's about building others up and just supporting them. Maybe they're not ready, and that's your own lens. But perhaps, you know, we all make judgments. But you're still there. You're always there as that beautiful place and space. And you give as if you're feeding others. You pick from the buffet, as you always say. So I just wanted to say thank you so much for your beautiful buffet that you're continuing to give everyone here. And I feel that it has enriched my life so much. So I do need to go to a meeting because I'm 14 minutes late, but I wanted to honor your you and this beautiful room. So thank you for the time. I'm taking out my actions today, as I always do, one beautifully consistent and persistent positive step. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. Much love Thank and you, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra. Thanks, Sandra. Thank you so much. And go spread your whatever you've got in your beautiful way to where you go next. Thank you. It's like the dessert after the meal. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, so let's talk about becoming something from today. And I've been thinking about mm -hmm. this, you know, Waddles D. Waddles, 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 Waddles. What a name he had. He talked about <clears throat> always see the world as becoming. And I really like that so much better. He said, you know, when the world no longer need dinosaurs, it got rid of them. And we'll get rid of the oligarchs when it's time for that. And to always feel that we are becoming in, in a world that is becoming, even if we don't understand it, that is becoming. Because my whole life, I've never had much sentimentality or romanticism about the past, even though I study it. I'm always looking forward. So forward, what can we do that's new and better, new and better? And, you know, as I said earlier, this uh, article is a great exposition on that simple be the change you wish to see in the world. You can take that simple line and then go into those nine paragraphs and go deeper and deeper into all the ways to manifest that. And, you know, Deanna, I think what you said earlier too uh, is kind of, I understand that and I feel it very much because, you know, there are people like uh, those who are supporting the former president's campaign when they're challenged about make America great again, what again meant. And they make a point, and then the interviewers say, well, yeah, but we had slavery then. Yeah, women didn't have the the vote then. It's, oh, well, yeah, well, yeah. See, forward, forward, forward. Learn from the past, step forward. And today, it's the same thing. What did I learn yesterday that I can take forward? What am I learning right now that I can take forward into my afternoon? What can I practice in my afternoon that I can take into my evening and tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow? As I have learned a long time ago, and so I repeat it cars have little tiny rear view mirrors and a great big windscreen because life is going that way that way or that when someone's down you can always say well, hey that was then this is now and in the now is everything that has ever been and ever will be if we can but find it
Mm. That's so beautiful. And I think the invitation always is that find it. You know, studying, studying, studying transformation for so many years and then learning this way of taking action every day that has moved all those things that I knew into things that I become. And that is the opportunity for everyone. What will I become today? What will I allow, allow, what have I allowed myself to become in in the in by the direction of other people? Noticing this and choosing, yeah, this is pretty good. And no, it's not so much. <laughs> and making the adjustments because I take the time each day to notice. What do I notice today? And take action on that. Not having expectations about how much I haven't noticed yet or any, any of that because the practice moves me forward steadily. And it's so important. It matters so much. And sometimes one little change open up so opened up a whole a whole area just like it's just available suddenly because we take the steps each day it's so cool i just wanted to stand in that oh and hey and my brother Sundar, hello <laughs> hi paul hi diana hi alex happy sunday to you Oh, one other thing, I mentioned it maybe yesterday or the day before, I'm going to mention again, the mystery of social media algorithms, whatever they are. I brought, I made a video on Facebook, and I'm surprised it hasn't got more people looking at it, even though I tag people, is, for example, share, share, share. When there's a webinar, and you're on, say, just one platform, just Facebook, you could see that one webinar might be shared on five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven different people's pages or groups. And you don't know the people doing it what they really want from the sharing. In other words, are they trying to get a lot of buzz on one particular group to help that group? Are they trying to get a lot of buzz on one particular person's page to give that some support? Because we all know. If you do a post on Facebook and the first you know, few minutes you get a few comments, Facebook says, oh, that's something, and they boost it. So as the viewer, not the maker, but as the viewer trying to support, when you've got a potential of maybe half a dozen or more different places you could give your comments and likes to, well, it could be almost a full-time job having multiple browser windows open and commenting and commenting and commenting and commenting, liking and sharing and chatting with sharing from all these different places that something is posted. Well, the makers or the speakers, if they can let us know that we would like to get as much buzz as possible on this one you know, page or this one group, that would help us know. Because if I follow something on YouTube and I do all my comments there, it may not see my comments on Facebook. But if someone would rather I would comment on Facebook and not worry about the YouTube, let us know. Because until, like we were talking about this the other day, that if you do a webinar, say from StreamYard or something like that, it would be great if it could have the technology to capture all the comments from all the platforms and share them across the platforms. So it wouldn't matter where I'm commenting, everywhere that video was posted would see in my comments. But now we're in that kind of in between, one foot on the dock, one on the boat, where if I put all my comments in one place, I may not be commenting somewhere else. So it, it, it kind of, it's a weird space we're in. Where everyone's trying to get buzz and sharing and everything commenting going. But when we have so many choices as the viewers of where we could be commenting and sharing from, it's either a full-time job we take on doing it all and we don't get anything done in our own lives or tell us where you want the most buzz and we'll go there. It's uh, it's kind of, a, I think, a very important message these days when any of us, 
we depending who we follow, we're getting invited to so many webinars and so many videos and so many meetings. We have to pick and choose who we follow and where we put our energies. So I'm just trying to say, tell us what you want and we can help you. Yeah, I'm going to jump back in and simply say, you know, I don't care where you comment as long as you comment. I don't care where you share as long as you share. I don't care what you listen to as long as you listen. You know, technology is, like Paul has pointed out aptly and correctly, you know, with StreamYard, yeah, there's multiple things. And so people may not see your comments. Like, I might not see a comment because you're on YouTube when I'm on Facebook or I'm on LinkedIn when you're on, you know, Instagram. But that, to me, it doesn't matter whether I see it. It's the fact that you bothered to comment and to share and to make a, a fruitful comment if you can. You know, some comments are so far out in left field by people that they don't make any sense. And some are derogatory. I get that. You know, there's always those people in the crowd. Or sometimes there's a spam comment that gets through. You know, things like I, All of that is meaningless to me. What, what matters to me is that, that you take the time that you, initiate, you, that you have the initiative to comment wherever, wherever it is that you're able to comment. And if you want to comment on YouTube and on Facebook and on LinkedIn and on IG, go for it. And if you only do one, better one than none. So, you know, the opportunity is there to do or not. And I encourage you to do wherever it is, however it is, whatever it is, and whoever sees it. And then Paul adds, you know, tell us what you would like. And we, we, we'd like to do that because our goal is to serve you and to add value to you. And we hope that in, in some small return that you would add value back by at least commenting or questioning, uh, giving feedback. Because feedback isn't just praise, you know. Feedback is saying, hey, I'd like this improved or, you know, I'd like it if you talked about this or I didn't really understand or get the topic yesterday or I disagree. I mean, you know, it's, it's fine. Feedback is feedback. But we want feedback. We want engagement. We want to be able to serve. We want to be able to help and add value. So, And we can't do that if we don't know. And that's why when people don't open emails, you say, well, either they're not interested or they might be interested, but I didn't reach them in a, in the, in a way that got through to them. And that would be on me. But if, I, if they don't tell me one way or the other, how would I know? And if I just keep doing what I'm doing, uh, I might not get through to them, but I would be getting through to other people, you know, who are who, who gravitate to that. So if I adjust what I do, I might lose the people I've already got. I mean, you know, in other words, it's very difficult to target these kind of different, you know, the millions of different niche individuals in the world to absolutely tailor everything to what they want. But we're willing to try to tailor to you as best we can so that you get the maximum value out of anything that we offer or anything that we suggest, anything that we have as a product or a program that we, you know, that we would have you in. We, we want to do our best job to reach you. And to help you understand if we've got value for you, that the value is there and to help you apply it in your life so that you can transform your life in ways that you can't even begin to imagine right now. But it does start with action. It starts with our action here and it starts with your action there. It's not a one sided deal. You know, I don't want to just be putting out messages without having messages come back. And I don't want to just be able to get messages without being able to respond either. So it's the, it's the exchange that is important. And um, liking something is the easy way out. And I take it many times, I, I promise you. Commenting is, is better than nothing. Sharing is, is maximally, because when you share something, you're saying, I found value in this, even if it's a stupid, silly meme. But if it's truly some life-changing meme or an event or a program or a book or a speaker or something, then you're really saying, hey, I found great value or inspiration in this and I want to share it with you because it's meaningful to me. It may be meaningful to you and you can change your life as a result of it. That's caring enough to share. Not just for the likes that you get back or the increased viewership, but because you care enough to care for other people to say this is a value from me to you and, and take it and use it with good, you know, with good intent and good purpose and may you be blessed in countless ways. That to me is what, what makes the difference. And so anyway, I, I thank you. And I thank you, Paul, very much for that. Well, here's a couple of little professional insights. One about emails, the question you brought up and about sharing. Emails, as long as someone doesn't unsubscribe, when you look at your inbox and you see all these things, even if you delete them and don't open them, it's like the equivalent of a billboard on the highway. You drive past it. You may not act on it, but there you saw a Pepsi sign again. 
And that's part of just awareness. In other words, every time someone just scrolls past an email from Rex Sykes, you've got Rex Sykes, Rex Sykes, Rex Sykes going in their mind. No, they may not be opening it, but as long as they're not unsubscribing, you're making a subconscious awareness. So you have that at least. Second, about sharing. Speaking for myself, and I know I've talked to a lot of people about this in my professional ways, when people share something on, say, Facebook, where they share it from is a reflection on the sharer. In other words, for me, uh, I like you 99.999%, and I like Russell Brunson 0.001%. So I would never share it from Russell's because I don't like him. But I like you, so I'll share it from your thing. So where someone shares it from says a lot about their connection and their depth of connection with where they're sharing it from. So when you've got this thing coming up this week, and it shows up on my feed in about 14 different people and pages, I will probably share it from the person or persons that I like the best. So when you see shares, it's not even the sh as much the share, but whose posts they're sharing gives you a great insight in the attachment there. But like I said, like you said, the energy and the affection and the depth of that share or the comment is worth mining, absolutely. So true, Paul. Uh, and Rex also made uh, some great points. Uh, when you look into this e-learning industry or even the social media, uh, uh, somewhere we see the stats and some somewhat they are true as well. Uh, saying that more than 96, 97% of the people are consuming and not creating anything. And if they're if they're continuously consuming, uh, one or the other day they're going to lose interest in it. Instead of consuming a lot of information, what if the 5% of uh, information is reinforced so that they, st they start creating something out of it? And that's how, like Paul mentioned, the liking starts to begin and probably the sharing and other things also starts happening. Uh, so uh, how, to, how can a creator start thinking in such a way that the consumers will start creating well within the webinar or any kind of uh, live training, uh, uh, even if the information is less, but still they should get a feeling that they've created something, they've applied it, there is a, a powerful aha moment when they can implement in real day in the in the real day world and feel confident about it. Is there a way we can crack that? Well, even to the topic of the room, what we see, if we're really aware, we will try to, to divine and sense the why, the what, and how of what is we see. And if we sense a why, a what, and a how that is harmonious to us, we may follow, we may like, we may comment, we may share. And then with what we do, you know, because in this world, We've changed from having audiences and performers to everyone's a performer. And to some extent, you go to so many concerts, and look at all the people who are taking pictures of themselves and the stage behind them as they turn around because we're all the star. Well, so what we do with what we post and what we share, we're saying something about us. This is someone I want to support. This is a thing that I like. And that's why in this world where everyone is their own brand, so-called, who you align with, who you stand with, and who you say I like defines who you are by people who measure that way. For instance, why, what, and how. There are people who are just why-centered. There are a lot of people who are just seem to be what-centered and some people are how-centered. But if you can integrate why, what, and how, well, that's what a brand really is. If it has a clear, consistent, fluid and focused message that always says this is who i am this is what this company is this is what they're about and that is what's our relationship as human beings too like today if i get out of the house at all and i may not because i'm working on something really big and i'm kind of uh, being drawn to do it even now but if i get out in the world today how i walk down the street maybe what i'm wearing the way i carry myself who and what i look at 
who I smile to, what dogs I speak to on this path, and what baristas I may converse with, and what I bring up and what I notice is me. And it's what I'm spreading. So what do I wish to spread is hopefully what I'm speaking and what I'm exuding. And even if I stay here, I'm just going to be looking at screens. If I choose to post and tap or share or comment, I'm expressing what I believe, my why, my what and how, potentially to those who will also see that and see it and share it. These th those three words, why, what, and how, is almost like animals. When they look out in the wild and they see something's either a threat or a potential mate, we're doing the same thing. Does this harmonize with me? Does this agitate me? Does this bore me? Does this irritate me? And my reaction on an animal level, even in social media, says, you know, you ignore something that doesn't appeal to you or you don't like, you don't want to give energy to it, and you give energy to things that either wound you, hook you, or turn you on. It's fascinating because in my business, I have to pay attention to that. And I'm on so many platforms I don't have any love for, but I observe and I pay attention to what people are doing so I can bring that to the businesses and the companies so they understand it better. That's why I always say I don't stand on the side of my clients. I stand on the side of the people, those clients whose money they want to get, the public. <laughs> so why, what, and how we do things matter in life and even on silly social media. All right, we're here every day, 8.30 a.m. Pacific. You can get this blog post in your email or inbox by going to gratitudeactivator.com. Go all the way to the bottom, and you can sign up to have contact with the syncing before, during, and or after the room on your terms. All right, I'm going to go get back under my blanket because it's cold today. Yeah, Thank you, my co-conspirator. <laughs> All right. Love being here with you. Thank you for sharing this space with me. Forward thinking, forward action taking people. How we roll. All right. Thank you, Sundar. I hope to see you again, hopefully, tomorrow. Yeah. Surely. There is a little... Uh, time lapse for me, but I will try to make it every time possible, Diana. Thanks a lot. Yeah, I love sharing space with you. And your questions take us deeper and deeper. I love it. So, all right. Enjoy the rest of the Sunday and celebrate everything. Closing the room in 8, 9, 10, 11. Bye bye.